previously on Divorce Court. What brings us to court today, Ms. James? He's constantly lying. He does not answer the phone. And I feel like the things that he's doing are now a liability. Give me the evidence. There was one night that I'm calling his phone constantly, calling, calling, calling. He's not answering. Now it's 3 a.m. He finally answers the phone. He said to me, oh, hey, we're all just hanging out. And, you know, it's a couple girls over here and there. Exactly. I can't be that crazy. So, yeah, I, I was there at 3 a.m. But the situation is, you know, I told her what was going on, you know? Not like she had to find out through the Wait, 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 wait. What prevented you from at about 11 o'clock calling her and saying, I don't want you to wait up, but I'm okay, I'm over at Joey house? Well, I mean, the only thing that prevented me from that was a few beers, you know? Just, just having a general good time. And you My forgot that track. you were married? And like about two seconds later, he butt dials me. And what I actually heard was him and another woman. I knew that they were having sex or they had just had sex. This happened way before we was married. Every time he does something, he's not answering, I go back to that moment. So how can we fix that? Because that's your wife. I understand there was a, an issue that was for real, the, the issue with the nanny. What's going on oh, with this yeah. nanny? So this is, this is really, honestly, the final straw for me. Um, it, it went from a female being uh, hired at the shop to now him thinking that she could be the nanny, which I didn't have a problem with. But then I started looking at their relationship and a lot of things made me uncomfortable. Like I said, my intuition does not lie. She worked at the shop at, at first. Yes. And then she transitioned into nanny? Yeah, she did. What was her experience having taken care of a baby before? I really went off of my husband of what he told me. He basically buttered me up to this girl. Oh my gosh, you would like her. She reminds me of you. And that already was a red flag. When somebody, your husband or your boyfriend says that somebody reminds you of them, I'm already looking, I'm skeptical. Because nobody's me, first of all. But I seen their relationship, it was a separate thing from a full relationship with us as husband and wife. They had their own separate relationship. What do you mean by that? They would text each other. Um, they're always, I always catch them having like secret whispering conversations in the house. Why would oh. the nanny be just oh. texting your, exactly. your husband? The, shouldn't it, I mean, isn't it well, a parent? Well, well first, first of all, Your Honor, it's, it's, uh, it's not that we're texting, you know? As a nanny, there's certain instructions that I have to right. leave with her. I know, but, but don't y'all, but... I mean, she makes it hard for, for, for no, the I female don't. to text her because, she, the, you know, our nanny, I, I feel like she already job. feels uncomfortable by the, the, the vibe that she gives our nanny, you know? She, she already feels like she's on eggshells everywhere oh, around the this house. This is my house. I don't know, you know? what type of eggshells. You it's better like, be can, on eggshells. You might lose your job tomorrow. I, I get it. But, but one thing I do think is that as the man and him knowing her prior, he has to arrange that. I don't want to come and overextend myself after already having situations where As the, the man, like I'm, I'm trying to something. end the solution. I, I'm trying to be solution-based. Like, okay, she's already low-key scared of you. Let me handle it. But, Mr. James, wait, why them. would you even want all this in your house? Because I'm, I'm just questioning. You know, we have a newborn baby. Don't y'all understand? Wait, hold on. Parents, you have a phone, you have a phone, and the nanny that's going to take care of the baby has a phone. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you all be on a group Check. text? Thank you talking about the baby. That's all. I just because I want to be clear about that. Again, not we have a That's side why. conversation. They're having their it's own the nanny things. is already in fear of in, in, some, in some sort of her. She already feels uncomfortable. It's, it's more like she's doing me a favor when I'm trying to do things for us to go out. You get what I'm saying? So I'm trying to make plans for us to go out and put someone in place, but you know, so so instead of instead of trying to force a situation that doesn't look like it's going to work and blow up even more. I mean, like, let me be the husband and, you know, articulate, what it's, articulate with her. How did it turn out? Bad. It turned out with me uh, a, a couple of situations. I seen them leaving off together one time. I was at, uh, we were at the dance studio. And um, we were practicing. We had a show coming up. I look to my right. They're there. I look away. I look back. The both of them are gone and the baby's still there. So I asked her and I said, so where, where's, um, where did CJ go? Where did he go? One of the dancers, they said, oh, um, he left with the nanny. I was like, okay, and this is exactly what I'm talking about. And I called him, I said, this is exactly what I'm talking about, this separatism. Why isn't she here with the baby? Why, why do you have to drive off with her to wherever you guys went? I don't even know what the story was. I just felt uncomfortable and I didn't like it. And I felt like sometimes that should be enough for him to wake up and move differently. Like, put us in a group chat. Set, let us have a conversation with each other. Let us really get to know each other. Make the situation comfortable for me and not make it comfortable for the nanny. Who is that? She could come and go tomorrow. Well, I'm gonna say this first of all, Your Honor. Our nanny's actually here today to properly explain herself. 
Um, you know, but even with the situation that she's talking about, I actually tried to notify her that, you know, the nanny actually had, had an emergency that she had to tend to really fast and she needs to get there really quickly. You know, so I, I left and I took it. <clears throat> what happened to the baby? Um, there was well, the yeah, the, yeah, the baby, I mean, we, we own a dance studio, there's a lot of hands, a lot of help. You know, so so it, it was it wasn't even a far trip. It was she had to go she had but to go grab problem. something. Now I have to work. And I have to bring while it back. Also attending to make sure the baby is good. That's why the nanny is there. I don't. I shouldn't have to pass them off to. I, I, I told her my friends where we would or go. pass them she off to the other dancers. Call, period, and... Your Honor. Um, I'm so honor. glad that the the nanny in question is able for us to join, right? Yes. And Robert, will you please ask the witness to join us? Sure. Thank you. Because sure. that way. She and I can have a conversation. Hi there. Hi. Hi. Please tell me what your name is. My name is Diamond Glenn. Oh, I love your per first name. You. Thank you. I love that. Mm -hmm. Somebody with a name like Star, you know, I love <laughs> an inanimate object type name. <laughs> Ms. Glenn, tell me what's the nature of your relationship with the litigants? Okay, so I met them working at their clothing store that they own together. I worked there for about six months mm -hmm. before I was approached by Mr. James to be their nanny, and I did that for about three or four weeks before it went sour and I was terminated by Mrs. James. Okay. So you know I have to ask this. Did you have any kind of intimate relationship with Mr. James? Absolutely not. I do not mix business with pleasure. And that's why this whole situation is kind of off-putting because I make sure to carry myself and do that. So when going through something like this, I'm just completely, like, bewildered with the treatment that I received. Okay, so are you saying that Mrs. James did not treat you fairly? So, being a woman, I understand what kind of dynamics can exist in relationships, but I just feel like there was a lot of things that jumped to the gun, a lot of emotions that went way I high. I feel like a lot of times, as a woman, she could have stepped up or stepped to the side and not done certain things, maybe asked to be in a group chat with me so she wouldn't feel, like he said, uncomfortable or afraid. With those things from woman to woman, then you should have just d done them. What happened the night you were fired? It was pretty late. They came back like two or three o'clock in the morning. Mr. James, he was asking me about the baby. And we were kind of whispering. And she just comes past and is like, what is y'all whispering about? What are y'all doing? Just jumping down our throats. I didn't jump out and just ask them, what are you whispering about? I, I kind of, you know, I, that sounds crazy. And that's why I was a little bit offended because genuinely, I'm not worried about Mr. James at all. I'm going to be devil's advocate here for a second. Yeah. Miss Glenn, if I'm going to walk into another woman's home... Yes. ...the last thing I want is to her to feel some kind of way about me. Yeah. So I have this sort of reputation, Robert will tell you. I make friends with the wives of my boys. That's... There you I go. mean, it's actually... Exactly. It's, everybody knows that that is who I am. I, I understand am very that. good friends with their wives. You want me to tell you why? Because I don't ever want to have no mess. Mm -hmm. I don't like mess. Mm -hmm. I can't stand mess, okay, at all. And I've never been involved in any for that reason. So I'm mm -hmm. always closer to their wives. So, you know, just for your own self-preservation, it mm -hmm. might be cool to when you're walking in a situation like that is to say, okay, Ayana, why don't you and I mm -hmm. roll over to Houston's real quick? We try. And have a, a drink. So I can see how you like things done in your house, because mm -hmm. I'm rolling in your house. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's the kind that of thing. That would have made me feel comfortable. Because then you establish a relationship with the woman of the house. Yeah. And then the second thing, and this is the most important, I'm going to give you this little piece of advice. You never need to be on a private chat with another woman's husband. Mm -hmm. Not when you're working inside her house. Because mm -hmm. that's never going to make her feel confident. confident. It's just not. Yeah. And I have all kind of male friends. Okay? And I'm gonna tell you something. You could ask Robert right now. Unless it has directly to do with what time we coming to work here, mm -hmm. I know his wife like a sister, but she on the group chat. Am I mm -hmm. lying, Robert? Not at all. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. And I understand. Unless Robert is texting me directly about something has to do with this job, he on the group chat with my husband. Mm -hmm. And that's his boy. But that's just the way we do it. Mm -hmm. Because we don't like no mess. Yeah, going forward, I will do that because this whole experience was a lot. And to be honest, we tried. You know, like, I, we had bonding sessions. I sat where I've done her hair. We tried. But I think that, to be honest, this, this issue is bigger than me. You know what uh. I'm saying? And that's why I was a little bit offended because, genuinely, I'm not worried about Mr. James at all. What happened the night you were fired? Okay, so the night that I was fired, 
um, they had came back. It was pretty late. They came back like two or three o'clock in the morning. And um, Mr. James, he was asking me about the baby. So I'm like, okay, I'm telling him what happened. And we were kind of whispering. And she just comes past and is like, what is y'all whispering about? What are y'all doing? Just jumping down our throats. And it was kind of awkward because I'm trying to tell about what happened at the night with the kids, what went on. So after that, I was kind of uncomfortable. But like you said, I don't want to step on her shoes. This is her house at the end of the day. I didn't jump out and just ask them, what are you whispering about? I, I kind of, you know, I, that sounds crazy. So I basically went over there and said, what are you guys talking about? Like, what's going on with the baby? And they, they had their separate thing. How's your intimacy life together? I mean, right now, it's kind of non-existent with everything that's going on. I just feel like no matter what I try, everything's always wrong. You have to work harder to make sure that your wife feels secure. And let me be real clear, you need to hire an abuela, <laughs> the hunchback kind with the little pimple right here and the black hair coming out. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. Ms. Griffin, talk to me about the dynamic of that night. So you all were having a private conversation. Yeah. So, but it, I, would, it, I wouldn't even say it was private. If she would have came in and approached it properly, it wouldn't have been an issue. But because she came in the room already suspicious, that's why I went left. So I'm just worried about something. But Miss Glenn, if you're updating on the baby, why mm -hmm. did you update the couple? That's all I want to know. Well, at the time, he's the one that asked. She didn't ask. If they were both in a room and they were asking me, I would have. It was just him. He asked it was me. Late. He came. The baby through. was, you know, sleeping. Didn't want to make too much noise. So, just a quick debrief, it's supposed to be over, good night, you know, but... But it didn't, then it went left. She, yes, know, it went yeah. left when Ayana came in the room asking questions. Can you imagine when you're not doing anything and somebody is, like, asking you something in an accusatory, like, tone? And to be honest, I still didn't even act the kind of way because I know perception is everything. I'm a woman. I know how it feels to be in that kind of situation. So I, I didn't even say anything. So after that, I asked him for a ride home. So he said yes. He's always <laughs> a gentleman. He's, he always now takes me home. Ride home. I mean, like, I needed to get home. Is there, is there an issue with me asking for a I ride home? Uber and just get out of the whole situation. I'll Uber home. Honestly, well, me, she I'm lives old around, school, Your Honor. She lives literally a block and a half, like, away from us. Your Honor, But I'm it's old 2, school. 3 o'clock in the morning. I was, raised, I was raised that, you know, to take a, take a young lady home. So late at night, anything can happen. You want to make sure you see her getting in her door, and she, I mean, and before you, before you pull off. You know what, Ms. Glenn? I, I trust that you did absolutely nothing wrong. I trust that. Okay, you don't even come across like a young lady that would. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I'm old school too. The nanny coming into my house can't look like you. I'm biased. <laughs> I ain't even gonna lie. I'm so I'm a, I'm gonna give you my bias right here. Folk could be mad at me if they want to, but the nanny coming in my house, she gonna have a hunchback look like an abuela, <laughs> look like witchy poo with a little bump right here and a black hair coming out of her skin. That's Listen, super serious. I agree. The nanny gonna look like coming in my house, and I know. The women on my jury, I know y'all feel the same way. So y'all just go ahead and don't be thinking I'm the only one. Thank you. <laughs> I know I'm not the only one. And I know you didn't do anything wrong, OK? I know you didn't. And I don't want you to be a part of this. And I want to make it very clear, because this is a public forum, that you acted honorably and professionally. And I think you would probably be an asset in any employment that you get in the future. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And to be honest, with what, I've, I, with what I see, I wouldn't be surprised if the, the, the nanny, the old nanny, was running out of there, too, OK, at some point. Wow. OK. But I'm just saying Mr. that. It's wow. just, you know. OK. Ms. Ms. Thank James, you very much. I'm not going to blame you for not being comfortable in your own home. Okay. I'm not, because I think you have every right to not be comfortable in your own home. And I understand that you all have faced a crossroads. What have y'all tried to do to fix it? I brought divorce papers, uh, basically, because the crossroads is either uh, he, he moves differently and figures out how to make me feel secure as his wife and, and the person that takes care of his kids and the person that owns businesses with him. How's your intimacy life together? <laughs> it's, uh... I mean, right now, it's kind of non-existent with everything that's going on. We're, we're always hearing it. I feel like we see each other for four hours at, at the nighttime, and that's like two hours to eat, and then, the, and then the other two are like probably to watch TV on our way to sleep. 
You know what I mean? So we we barely or rarely get to. Y'all are a time. young couple. I know. You know, and we're working. It's, it's not my fault. All the time. You know, just so you know. You know, um, I just feel like no matter what I try, everything's always wrong. Mr. James, you have to work harder to make sure that your wife feels secure and trusts you. Yeah, because understand. honestly, your behavior, I'm going to say, I trust that you have not been cheating. Appreciate that, Your Honor. I trust that you have not been cheating. And, and Your Honor, but that's I, why don't I don't trust that you have been acting in an honorable way. You know the difference? Exactly. Yeah. Because being honorable is not just not about cheating. It's about being respectful. Yes. And if you know that because of whatever has happened in your past, you've left her with a level of insecurity, the way you're going to rebuild that trust is to give her that security. prepared to do to, to well, stave off the divorce? You've got to say what you're prepared to do. I'm prepared to listen, you know, to learn, to love, you know, any, anything else that, that she deems You just tell her, I'm not I'm married to, to you. I'm here to listen, to learn, to love, and, you know, to show you that I appreciate you and that I hear everything that you're saying. And, you know, hopefully that you can see that within me and see that I love you and, you know, we can move past this. I know, I know we can. You need to be prepared to pick up your phone when your wife calls. Listen, that was, that was very true. You don't need to true. call every minute of the day either, Miss James. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but when she calls, you need to pick up the phone. I'll What's be fine with that. I'm fine with that. I won't harass your line, but when I do call you, you have to answer the phone or else mm -hmm. I'm going to think mm -hmm. all of these things. And go back to that dark place exactly. that we don't want her to go to. Exactly. And let me be real clear. You need to hire an abuela. <laughs> the hunchback kind with the little pimple right here and the black hair coming out. Well, everyone out there, I'm looking for one, so please come in the right direction. Okay, because we're not trying to have the beautiful nanny. The you don't need all that. Sorry, it's a bias. All the beautiful nannies out there that's mad at me right now, <laughs> sorry. But y'all can't come up in the crib. Sorry. I mean, with, with what you've said, Honestly, a lot of times, that's just what I want to hear. Instead of you pointing to me being insecure or instead of you just saying I'm insecure or this wasn't that or this was I would rather you just, you know, confront my emotions and make them, because they're valid. I understand. And it's important for our relationship and for our marriage to move on for you to, you know, listen to me and us to work through those things. And I don't, I, I really think you're capable, CJ. I do. And that's why I'm not even, I'm just going to rip these right up because this is not even, I feel like this is something that we really could work on with just talking to each other. I and, and getting through it. I'm glad you ripped those papers up. I think you all do have a shot at it. I really and truly do. Mr. James, you've got to treat Mrs. James with the love and respect of a wife. That's what you have to do. You're no longer dating her. You're no longer transitioning out of a relationship. You are dead in a relationship now. And it's a marriage. Locked there for life. <laughs> okay, you took vows. Yeah. And like I said, I gave you the benefit of the doubt. Don't let my trust be mistaken, okay? It won't happen. And put an ad in the paper for an abuela. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Ooh, I have to tell you, now that's a couple that I am rooting for. Yeah. But he's got to get on that respect train right away. You know, he was flirting with the idea of, you know, the, the nice looking nanny. I'm hiring the cute girl at the store. And she should just feel confident because I told her. Mm -mm. Right. She, he's got to rebuild that trust. Right. But I know everybody's going to be mad at me, mm. but I don't care. Hashtag hot nanny versus abuela. Yeah, let's go. Let Start the married the women say amen. Start the debate. <laughs> <laughs>